everybody. In a certain monastery, when the monks assembled in the chapel for Vespers, that's evening prayer, the monastery cat would get in the way and distract the monks from prayer. So the abbot ordered that the cat be tied up in the chapel during evening prayer. Now after the abbot died, the cat continued to be tied up during evening prayer. And when the cat died, another cat was fetched so that it could be tied up during evening prayer. Centuries later, scholarly treatises were written by the learned monks on the liturgical significance of tying up a cat during Vespers. Now we could become slaves to doing things a certain way and not knowing why we're actually doing them. This is especially true when it comes to religious rituals. Last week I spoke about marriage and related issues, if you remember. Now this is an area where tradition could take precedence over a living faith. For instance, some people seem to marry at the church, at the building that is, and treat it like a glorified registry office in line with family tradition, while others marry in the church. They're already in the community. They're already practicing members of the church. The church is the family of God, and if we have distanced ourselves from that family, then the church becomes little more than a building, pretty and all as it might be. But when we're part of the family of God, it makes all the difference. The Pharisees, at the time of our Lord, they had invented all sorts of peculiar customs which prevented the people from eating certain foods regarded by them as unclean. But Jesus takes issue with them and their man-made rules. And he declares, it's not what goes into the stomach of a man or woman that makes them unclean, but the malicious intentions which come out of their hearts which do, do all the damage. Now, we could get so caught up with the externals of religion, or worse still, even use religion to reinforce our own prejudices. Jesus accused the Pharisees of putting aside the commandments of God, which require them to love God and their neighbour, and reproach them for clinging to traditions which made them feel that they were a cut above everyone else. Now, Jesus brought them down to earth with a bang and they didn't like it. They put love of the law in ahead of the law of love. Hence, they had no compassion for the uphill struggles of, the, of the, their day. And Jesus told them as much. For them, washing hands, for instance, was more important than being clean within. We could be tainted with this way of thinking as well if we're not careful. Being clean within will mean we worship God in spirit and in truth. Genuine piety involves the whole person where body, mind and heart are enga engaged. It's not mere lip service. Jesus says today, It's what comes out of a person's heart which makes him or her unclean, because it is from there that those sinister intentions, those impure intentions emerge. But the opposite is also true. We are asked to love God with all our hearts and not settle for anything less. Here are a few questions for you to consider and discuss among yourselves. First, some spiritual leader once said that a sign of spiritual growth is having the ability to think the unfamiliar do we keep people from church by becoming too boring and predictable in our liturgies? What do you think of that? Second, some people marry at the church, at the building that is. Others marry in the church. They are already part of the believing community, the mass going community. What do you think is the difference? Third, in the Catholic Church, have we emphasized too much the practice of our faith at the expense of church-going people developing a deeper spiritual life? What do you think of that? Fourth, chopping and changing things too often in the Mass can put people off. 
What are your thoughts about that? Last, why do so many young people drop church after they get confirmed? Has the church itself something to answer for here by not seriously engaging with the younger generation? Interesting questions, aren't they? And the answers you come up with may be even more interesting. Now, thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.